Hello and welcome. Are you noticing some issues with your Zern Wilkins 375XL Reduced Pressure Principle Backflow Preventer? No worries. We'll go through some troubleshooting and maintenance steps to get your assembly functioning properly again. Remember, only certified personnel should perform maintenance on backflow preventers. Faulty maintenance could result in an improperly functioning assembly. Testing should be done at least once a year or more as specified by your local codes. When identifying an issue with your 375XL, here are some common problems that may signal a need for maintenance. Sudden or rapid spitting of water from the relief valve. A light intermittent drip. Or a heavy continuous discharge of water. First, let's gather the tools you'll need to complete your maintenance. We'll begin by showing you some diagnosing techniques to help you troubleshoot where your assembly is having trouble. Begin by noticing the water discharging from the vent. Close the number two shutoff valve. Inspect the vent. If the discharge from the vent stopped or is reduced, you've diagnosed that the number two check valve is the source of a leak and may need maintenance. If water continues to discharge from the relief vent at the same rate, slowly open test cock number four until the flow of water matches the discharge volume. If the water has stopped discharging from the relief vent, then you've diagnosed that the number one check valve is the source of the leak and may need maintenance. This is the most common problem. If water continues to drip from the relief valve, then you've diagnosed that the relief valve is the source of the leak and may need maintenance. Now that you've diagnosed your problem, let's take the valve out of service and begin disassembling it. First, begin by closing the inlet and then the outlet shutoff valves. Open the number two, number three, and number four test cocks to release pressure from the valve. Next, unscrew the two screws in the top wedge. Lift the wedge upward. You can insert one of the screws in the middle hole to remove a stuck wedge. Slide the check housing and sleeve toward the inlet ball valve. Lift the check housing up and out of the strut assembly. Be careful not to lose the O-ring from the groove at the small end of the housing or the O-ring that sits at the large end at the number one check seat. They may stick against the ball valve or the sleeve. Remove the checks from the housing by pushing on the check visible from the small end of the housing using your thumb or the handle of a screwdriver. You can also use a short object, such as a socket. Place the object on a flat surface. Place the housing over the socket so that it pushes into the valve outlet at the small end. Then push down on the valve body. Both checks should slide out of the inlet end of the body. Pro tip, service the checks one at a time to avoid mixing parts. Untwist the spring from the seat retainer in a counterclockwise direction. Using your fingernail, inspect the seat surface for any nicks or dings. If the seat is damaged, you'll want to replace the check assembly. Re-grease the seat O-ring afterward. To access the seal ring, first remove the screw and the retaining washer. Inspect the rubber seal ring for cuts or embedded debris. If the reverse side of the seal ring is unused, it's possible to flip the seal ring as a temporary solution while you're waiting for new replacement parts. Repeat this process for the second check assembly. Reassemble the check valve. Make sure to put the stronger spring in the number one check assembly. If needed, place new O-rings on the seats of each check assembly and lubricate these O-rings. Wipe clean and inspect the inside of the housing for debris or damage. Drop the number two check assembly into the housing. Then drop the number one check assembly in. Turn the number one check until the number one spring retainer lines up with the notches on the number two seat. 
push both assemblies into the housing until they're flush with the front surface. Clean or replace the O-rings on both ends of the housing. Insert the O-rings into the check housing. Lubrication is not required. Make sure the housing is facing the correct flow direction and place it into the strut assembly. Slide the housing toward the outlet ball valve. It should rest on the outlet ball valve and sleeve. Next, push the wedge down onto either side of the valve. This will make the sleeve slide against the check housing. Put the two screws into the outside holes of the wedge and tighten. Do not over tighten these screws. Over tightening will cause the sleeve to leak. Place the assembly in service and test per the testing procedures document for the 375XL on Zern.com. If you've diagnosed that the relief valve is your problem, complete the following steps. First, we'll remove six of the screws that are holding the relief valve cover. The cover is spring-loaded, so leave two screws in place that are opposite each other. Hold the cover tightly in place and remove the last two screws. Pull the cover straight away from the check housing. The relief valve cartridge will stay in place. Remove the spring. Inspect the sharp edge of the seat for any damage. A damaged seat can be removed by pulling outward. To reinstall, lubricate the O-ring and place it back into the housing. Then push and twist the seat back into the housing. Next, disassemble the cartridge by unscrewing the seal ring screw. Inspect the diaphragm for wear or holes. Inspect the O-ring on the upper plunger for wear or damage. Carefully reassemble the cartridge and tighten the retaining screw. Lubricate the O-ring on the upper plunger. Place the spring around the seat in the housing. Insert the cartridge assembly into the spring. Place the cover onto the relief valve. Push the cover toward the housing, making sure the cartridge centers on the seat in the seat guide and that the diaphragm is not pinched between the cover and the housing. While holding the cover in place, thread two screws by hand into opposite holes. Next, thread the remaining screws into place and tighten evenly. Place the assembly in service and test it per the testing procedures outlined in the 375XL manual. Well, thanks for watching this troubleshooting and maintenance video for the Zern Wilkins 375XL Reduced Pressure Principle Backflow Preventer. We hope you found this information useful. If you need additional support, please reach out to our Zern Customer Care Team. For more installation and troubleshooting videos, visit Zern's YouTube channel.